I'm Dr. Ahmed Khubrani, pediatric uh, emergency consultant. King Abdelaziz, uh, uh, King Abdullah bin Abdelaziz uh, University Hospital, Prince Noura Universities, and also medical simulation uh, educators. Uh, it's our pleasure today to have Ms. Haifa, uh, will be the, our second speakers for the second day of Healthcare Simulation uh, Awareness Week. Um, Ms. Haifa will talk about the experience of multidisciplinary team simulation in National Guard in 2019. She, uh, Ms. Haifa has a Master of Healthcare Administration and Management. She works as organ donation nurse in ICU, covering pediatric and adult and cardiac ICU. And she working as simulation lab specialist in National Guard. So welcome, uh, welcome Ms. Haifa, and you can start. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Good afternoon, all. First of all, I'd like to welcome all of you to the Healthcare Simulation Activity 2020 from the Saudi Society for Simulation and Healthcare. My name is Haifa Hamidi. My background is ICU nurse in the Ministry of National Guard and Riyadh. Today, I'll talk about our experience as a multidisciplinary team simulation at National Guard Hospital in 2019. My outline is introduction of King Abdelaziz Medical City ICU simulation lab, our simulated scenario and hands-on session, KMC ICU simulation participants, KMC ICU simulation lab SWOT analysis, and our future improvement plan. National Guard Simulation Lab was established actually in 2007 to provide an immersive learning experience for the healthcare provider and students. Our simulation lab located inside the intensive care department in the hospital, which consists of three rooms, which looks very similar to the real ICU room to allow the participants and practice clinical and non-clinical skills in a safe environment following the principle of do no harm to the patient. Starting with the briefing, debriefing, or control room, where the participants can sit together with the simulation experts and discuss their learning outcomes prior to, the, prior to starting the session, and also after having an open discussion, after finishing the session, they can also watch their video recorded session, discuss what went well and what was their mistake during the session for the purpose of improving their performance in the future. This is our high fidelity simulation room, which is well equipped as a real ICU patient room. We really believe that the greater similarity to the, of the simulation scenario to real life, the more likely the participants will behave as if they are in actual The participant is to create valid case scenario, which are different in the complexity level and the different skills to be learned. This simulation room, as you can see here, it has crush cards ready to be used, which is filled up with all the emergency needed equipment for adults and pediatrics, bronchoscopy machine, which is compatible with the mannequin, and also patient monitor, which is very similar to the real ICU monitor inside the patient home, which can display the laboratory and the examination, uh, examinations, uh, radiology and examination, such as the CT scan, X-ray, and all the things that is related to the case scenario. This is the high fidelity simulation room, which is similar to the, the first room, which has also the crash cart and the needed items for the scenarios. We highly recommend participants to be devised themselves as a team member to play a different role, to be able to respond to the scenario and care, caring for a patient as a real patient where they can practice their clinical and non-clinical skills as a multidisciplinary team. In this slide, we can see where they practice the hands-on practical session, such as the central line insertion, having different type of mannequin, 
Here we have the ultrasound compatible mannequin and the other mannequin which can be filled up with blood. They can practice in a sterile field wearing all the PPE in a sterile way. And also we are having the basic airway management with all the needed equipment as well as the difficult incubation cost. Our monthly schedule is posted on the hospital official web, uh, website. As we can see here, going from department, we choose real, then intensive care burn unit, ICU simulation lab, then it will, give, it will give us the updated schedule, which is look like this. This is our schedule, which also which shows the specific dates and time, who, who are the audience, and the topic of the scenarios or the simulation session with the different instructors from the ICU consultant, fellow, nurse, nurse educator, infection control practitioner with the simulation specialist on a different monthly basis, like January, February, and so on. Now I'll, I'll talk more about the simulation scenarios and hands-on session data. Here we can see the case scenario, the topic of the case scenario that we, we use in our simulation, such as the anaphylaxis, uh, secondary to latex allergy, basic medica, uh, mechanical ventilation, septic shock, secondary to community acquired pneumonia, severe bronchial asthma, massive PE, complicated PEA arrest, gunshot, beta blocker overdose, sickle cell disease, and also the hands-on practical sessions such, such as the central line, basic airway management, donning and doffing of PPEs, hand hygiene, surgical scrub, non-invasive ventilation orientation for the new ICU participants, ICU, ICU environment introduction. In addition, medical simulation provide a unique opportunity for hospital staff and students to practice team communication, leadership skills, interdisciplinary care, and patient safety. In this slide, we can see the frequency, how many times we repeat the same topic for the whole 2019 in different months. For example, the anaphylaxis secondary to latex allergy topic was repeated five times, like in a different um, time in a year. Also, 11 times the central line session was repeated 11 times in a year. And also here we can see massive PE, complicated PERS was repeated 10 times in a year. Almost 90 sessions was done for a different, with a different topic for a different learner in the ITU simulation during 2019. This slide can show how many sessions was done per month, how many times we repeated the session each month. So for example, in January, we did five sessions in a different topic. In February, we did nine sessions, while in March, 11 sessions was done, eight was done in April. In May, actually, unfortunately, we did zero session. That was because of Ramadan. We are holding all the simulation activity in Ramadan. Then we resume back in June with eight sessions, July six, six sessions, and so on. With the same total of session, 19 session was done in the total in 2019. ICU simulation is also uh, is not only for the ICU participants, but they are also supporting other units, such as nursing department, facilitate actually and support other learning experience for other units, such as the nursing department, the RC department, the ER, anesthesia, code blue committee, and nursing college. They are also using our simulation for their learning activity such as uh, for the nursing college, they are using it for physical assessment, hand hygiene, donning and doffing, PPEs, uh, doing physical examination, auscultation to the heart and lungs, uh, anesthesia, also code blue committee, they are using it like, for example, for the CPR, ACLS algorithm.
Uh, here I'll talk about the ICU simulation participants. This chart shows how many participants have attended the simulation session under the ICU. As we can see, 45 participants, participant or learner have attended in January, while 47 attended in February, 51 in March, April, 43 participants, and again, we have zero participants in May, 26 in June, and so on. Total of 417 participants or learners have attended the ICU simulation, uh, simulation session activities. Now we talk about the King Abdulaziz Medical City ICU simulation lab, what analysis? Start with the strength. We have sufficient space for the participant load. KMC ICU simulation orientation was added on the orientation day for our residents. So in each day, on each orientation day for the residents, we give brief introduction about our simulation, our activity, how to contact us and what, where to find the schedule and what are the skills to be learned. Uh, faculty continuity and commitment to develop a critical thinking skill to the participants. We have a great information and technology support system to support our simulation uh, lab. Different expertise from different uh, departments to support the simulation lab teaching. We have the IQ consultants, fellows, and from the nursing department, RT department, and so on. Availability of different teaching modalities. Talking about opportunities, technological advance that incorporate realism and problem solving into learning scenario, ongoing, de ongoing development and improvement of the scope for the, for the uh, KMC IT simulation lab, increased demand for effectiveness and efficient lab experience to add the IQ board attractiveness to be a simulation-based education. While on the other hand, talking about the weakness, we have equipment maintenance. Sometimes we are having like troubleshooting with the, uh, with the machine and the high fidelity system, the audio as well. So we are working on this actually to improve it. Misperception of simulation as a teaching model. Some difficulty facing the faculty participation actually during the high workload that they have. The threat is the simulation lab activity actually focus more on equipment and tasks than problem solving and critical thinking, which also we are working on this to improve it for the future. Talking about the future improvement plan, we have goals to be achieved. Enhance, enhance and appreciate the faculty, like the medical doctors, the RT, nursing, who are committed in the simulation teaching. Increase the faculty participation in more teaching sessions, to have more sessions in the future, to increase the number, and then increase the number of learners to benefit from the education activity. We are uh, about to add a new hand on training skills to be included in this, our schedule, such as more bronchoscopy sessions, chest tube insertion, ultrasound examination, tracheostomy, ECMO, uh, ECMO troubleshooting, and big tail insertion. Inside the simulation session to improve the team performance, we want to add more inside the simulation session to improve overall team members' performance in the future and improve the debriefing skills for resident fellows and teaching skills as a teaching skill. Maximize the use of audiovisual system inside the simulation. This is our uh, Twitter account for our ITU uh, simulation in National Guard Hospital, where we post all our new events, schedule, and activities. And this is our Twitter account, uh, sorry, our uh, email, National Guard official simulation email for any contact, booking, or any clarification. Thank you all for your time joining my presentation.
thank you, Ms. Haifa. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. Uh, now we can open for uh, for question. If anyone he has question, he can come on and uh, type his question in the chat or raise hand, and we can keep him unmute. So, Ms. Haifa, if you allow for me, I will ask the question first. Sure. As we are waiting for other question, so how is the how is the work between the ICU sim labs and the general sim labs coordinated for the national guard? Uh, this is first question and second question. Uh, did you what is the most uh, barriers or difficulty you face it as? Uh, as multidisciplinary teams with other teams to facilitate a simulation session or simulation uh, uh, education session. Thank you for your question. Uh, to answer the first question, how to coordinate between the main simulation and our simulation, actually inside the hospital, we have no other simulation. It's only the simulation lab inside the ICU and intensive care department. So for us to coordinate, I mean, the other departments, if they want to coordinate with us, like for example, book our simulation to use it for their, for their learning, we are really more than happy. We are willing to help them. Uh, usually they book with us uh, through email, uh, send, the, send us what are the time and dates that, that they want to use our simulation. And as I said, we are more than welcome to have them use our simulation. Uh, what was the second, second question was about like challenges that we are facing with other departments. Um, alhamdulillah, we have no problem, Yani. Um, we are fine if they are like, if they will book our simulation to use it for their learning activities or uh, any activity, teaching activity. Uh, if it's not like, um, with the same time that we are having our session, then we are fine. We, Alhamdulillah, we have no problem. Thank you very much, um, Saifa. Uh, okay. I don't see any question. And as we finish before the times, um, mashallah, you're so fast. Uh, Uh, if you can, uh, Saifa, if, if you can uh, type your emails over the chat so anyone he has question uh, or he wants to request specific slides. Yeah. Actually, as I shared here, our uh, Twitter account, uh, we are, I'm still sharing the screen, isn't it? Uh, uh, this is our Twitter account. Yes. I can receive all the questions, clarification, and anything. And this is our official simulation ICU email. I also can answer any question or any clarification, booking, or any type of clarification. Uh, so thank you very much for all attendees and for uh, Ms. Haifa for her great uh, presentation. Um, and by this, we almost complete the afternoon uh, sessions. We have still some sessions. Viking Abdelaziz University Hospitals will be conducted at the night times. Uh, we are continuing our uh, simulation week activities tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Uh, I still encouraging all to go and join all almost the workshops and lecture will be free. And thank you very much for each one. He's participate and he's attend to the lectures. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Ms. Haifa. Thank you all.